Yeah, so I'm a curator. So as a curator, I work mostly on books and exhibitions. And what I brought to you today is a short selection of a few exhibitions and books I've worked on in the last period, in the last couple of years, and some very new projects I'm working on. This is what Thomas was telling you about before. And this is the exhibition that has just opened at this new space that the Fondazione Prada in Milan just opened. Maybe you know the main building of the Fondazione Prada, which was uh, founded like um, 16 months ago in Milan, and this building was restored by the Grand Callers. But now the Fondazione Prada has opened a new space, which is called the Serbatorio, in the very center of Milan, just a few steps from the, the cathedral. And for the first exhibitions, we decided to work on a very uh, specific theme, a very actual theme, and that's the diaristic approach to photography in the last 15, 20 years. What I'm very much interested to, to work on in the last period is the combinations, is the hybridizations between photography and the other media and the other disciplines. I mean, between photography and, I don't know, music and architecture and painting and everything. And you will see that most of the projects that I'm showing here tonight are you know, based on these concepts. So I'm very much interested in these dark space where photography melts with other, with other disciplines. And of course, I'm very much interested in what's happening to photography now. And this exhibition is exactly about that. I mean, uh, specific, uh, something very specific that's happening to photography right now. And as I told you, it's the, so, it's the so called personal documentary. So, what's happening now after uh, Nan Golding, after Wolfgang Pilman, after Richard Billingham, after Larry Clark, and all these people that worked on the uh, diaristic approach in the last 40 years. And so this is an exhibition bringing together 14 different artists coming from all over the world. So that's what was very important to say that this is, this is a global, let's say, trend. And what we found after our researches is that most of these people, most of these photographers, are staging their pictures. And we started with, with a very well-known one, who is Ryan McGinley and Lila Da, two Americans, and both of them do stage their pictures. And so it's like uh, that it's, it's like to, to, to believe in a diary nowadays, that diary has to be staged. It, it doesn't have to be spontaneous, not any more credible that way. And it was also very important to me to put very well-known artists as Lila Da, as Melanie Bonayo, as uh, Ryan McGinley, together with, side by side, with unknown artists, and very young ones. One of them is still a student in an academy in, in Bologna, for example. And so you have all of these you know, different views and different cases and different approaches melting together. And another exhibition, yeah, in the last couple of years, it happened that I had to uh, work on inaugural exhibitions in two spaces. One is the Fondazione Prada, and another one is this camera in, in Turin. And we chose Boris Mikhailov to open this space, again, as a statement, because as you know, Boris Mikhailov is an artist who worked at mixing photography with many, many different media. And so, for example, he mixed photography with painting in this case, he mixed photography with cinema, he mixed photography with theater, he staged pictures sometimes, and so on. So many different approaches. And this was an, a retrospective exhibition, and the title of, it, of this exhibition was Ukraine, because it was an, a retrospective done through his view of his home country. <laughs> and so it was kind of you know, following Boris Mikhailov in a long trip 
through his country and through the history of his home country. And so here you can see many different series that he did in the last 50 years. And of course, we do accompany every exhibition with a book. And in this case, the book was published by uh, Koenig. Uh, and every time at Camera, we do publish a book, we do it with a different, uh, with a different publisher. And it's very important, I think, to find the, 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 uh, the right publisher for the right project. So in this case, Boris Mikhailov, uh, did already work with uh, with uh, with Koenig, and the catalog was showing was including only pictures which were not included in the show. So it was kind of a second show that people could bring home and restart. And the pictures included in this catalog were all uh, were all uh, uh, unpublished. So it's, it was kind of a work on the scraps, on the rejected pictures of Boris Mikhailov. And so it was kind of a second retrospective because again, it was since the very beginning of his career to the very end of it. And, but through unknown pictures, to unpublished pictures and through rejected pictures. This is another project that I did create in the last period. And it's done by, um, Italian Swedish artist, her name is Linda Freni Nagler, and in this case it started from a, from a book. So we worked on a publication for a couple of years, and the title of the book is The Hidden Mother. And she collected more than a thousand of pictures in ten years, all about the hidden mother. I mean, all of these pictures were showing mothers or fathers or, or nannies hiding in some way, uh, but, but, but showing their, the, the, the showing children. And that's something which was very much common between the 19th century and the early 20th century, and it became kind of a genre. And so Linda did, uh, did go through this kind of genre and create a collection about it, and you can see, and the book was organized into different chapters, and every single spread was dedicated in a way of hiding. So in this case, we called it burka. This was much more technical, and so people hiding uh, in the dark room. In this case, this is, I love this one, you know, mothers hiding behind the heads of their children. There were really so many, like, a hundred different way of hiding. And then this project became a, a show and it was shown at Venice Biennale, the Biennale, the 2013 Biennale created by Massimiliano Gioni, but in a section which was created by, uh, by Cindy Sherman. And she decided to put all of these pictures on display in this long table, it was like 10 meters long, and all of the pictures were, were there, so it was kind of an accumulation. And the very last things I'd like to show you are the projects I'm, I'm working on at the moment, because it's something that I'm really, you know, it's really important to me right now. And so it's Gerard Fiere, which is a Dutch photographer. This exhibition is done uh, in collaboration with Le Bal in Paris and with the Photo Museum Den Haag in The Hague. And so it's a touring exhibition. It's been shown in Paris a few months ago. And so this is one, Fiere, which is a very, uh, which is kind of an outsider artist, art brood photographer. This is Francesco Jodice, which has just been shown in camera and will uh, open here very early in a few weeks. And it's going to be a, kind of a new career retrospective exhibition, and, but it's going to be based on the processes that Francesco Iodice used to produce his pictures. So the core at center of the exhibition, there's this kind of table, this kind of machine, which displays the processes which are behind the final 
pictures of Francesco Iodice. And the last one is this one, which is a book and an exhibition about Eric Kessels. Again, is a kind of a mid-career retrospective. And the book is published by Aperture. The, the show will be uh, at Camera in uh, May this year. And as you can see, there will be so many pictures, so many works spread around space. So it's going to be a very dense uh, exhibition this year. So thank you. <laughs>